Well, I wanted to comment on a video I saw by Sam Harris, who's one of the, um, he's a member of the New Atheist Movement back in the 2000s. There were a number of folks, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, Christopher Hitchens, who were kind of pushing this new form of atheism. But I actually think that Sam Harris is probably one of the best of them. He has, you know, it. It, some a decent knowledge of neuroscience and spirituality actually and I've actually found a lot of his work to be insightful and he had this really good video it's called um, how do, how does matter give rise to consciousness and I think this is the wrong question but I'm going to explain that but he makes some good points and then about halfway through the video he falls short of it of the his line of reasonings natural um, conclusion, which is in fact that God does exist and is a personal and conscious entity. So he asks, how does matter give rise to consciousness? And the primacy of this question above all other questions, and he goes, and he says this is that, con is that even if you don't think about it, even if you totally ignore this, consciousness is all you have. It is fundamental to your experience of reality. It is the only thing by which you experience reality. So in so it's all you have, but it seems at least to um, to neuroscience to be just inexplicable to materialist analysis. Donald Hoffman, a reality theorist, um, said said basically, you know, we don't we can't explain a single experience in terms of a mechanistic model. We can't explain why something tastes this way or why something or why that wall looks yellow or. Just re it, it, we can't explain one thing about consciousness. It's fundamentally inexplicable in some, at least to science, in some very real sense. And he even considers the question, which I, w I was pretty surprised by, is like, what if consciousness exists after death? Because it doesn't seem to be a fundamentally material process. It seems to be a... Um, it seems to be almost a spiritual process which is happening outside of the body and interfacing with a limited, constricted existence in the body. And, but then he goes on to say that if the universe is actually stranger than we, than we suppose, and he says actually, not only that the universe is stranger than we suppose just by the fact of consciousness, but perhaps stranger than we can suppose. So this is what, this is what Immanuel Kant said. He said that the fundamental essence of the universe is so beyond our categories of consciousness and understanding that it's stranger than we could possibly suppose. And that's the same thing Sam Harris is saying. He said, but it won't resemble the, he calls it a, a corny picture that's given to us by religion. And I actually do think that it does, at least to some degree, um, that the, the fundamental identity of the universe do, or creation uh, which is how the universe relates to God as a creation versus a created entity. And there's, there's some feedback, but the, but I, th I think that it does somewhat resemble the picture given to us by most of the world's religions. So, but he says consciousness will probably always seem like a miracle. And that's actually because it, it is a, it is a miracle. Um, and what I think Sam Harris doesn't get when he's trying to look for a, materialist explanation or mechanistic explanation of that of the phenomenon of consciousness and Sam Harris is a he's a very smart guy I think he's a PhD in neuroscience so he actually understands these issues but he's looking still through the atheistic materialist mindset and so I think he'll most likely come up short so this is Jordan Peterson said about consciousness that he says uh, on Lex Friedman's podcast, he said, you know, in all likelihood, we will one day understand consciousness. We will have a fully reductionistic account of consciousness, which reduces consciousness to matter. And this is kind of a shocking statement because he's a, you know, religiously or spiritual, he's a religiously, metaphysically inclined guy. So, and definitely not, and the, he is kind of agnostic, but definitely not this kind of materialist atheist type. But he says, we will have a reductionist account of matter, of consciousness as reducible to matter. But our conception of what matter is will be so different by then and that the 
that it would be absurd to say that this kind of that our current picture of matter as an inanimate and non and unimportant and arbitrary and meaningless thing can't then scale up to generate consciousness. So you need actually to say, you know, if if our experience of reality is all that we have, and we know that we are within reality, we are within the universe, and so the universe is experiencing itself through us. And this is this you don't even need a religious explanation of that. You can say that scientifically, that the universe, we are composed of universe and is experiencing through us. So mind has to somehow be fundamental to reality and to the universe. So this is the mind equals reality principle in the CTMU that the, by virtue of the very intelligibility, the fact that our consciousness can interface with the universe, it has to have this mental component. Reality behave, is like a mind. And Sam, and Sam Harris, I think, goes completely off track because he says, you know, consciousness is a miracle and we will never under, fully understand it. And that's all fine and dandy. But then he says, you know, well, in the future, we'll have sentient robots and we'll be able to upload our minds to the cloud. And uh, Chris Lang made a really good point in his interview with Michael Knowles, which was unfortunately um, shelved by the um, executives at the Daily Wire. But he said that, you know, these people who think we're just going to upload our brains to the cloud and live forever, what they don't understand is that reality is already like that. Reality is this mind. We are living in the display of a reality self-simulation. So that means that we're already upload. There's nowhere to upload to. We're here. This is it. And if you are, and they're trying to seek kind of immortality. And this is a, it goes back, you know, thousands and thousands of years back to the, at least the epic of Gilgamesh of these, uh, these, you know, kings, these wealthy and powerful people trying to seek immortality. What they don't understand is that if you are in concordance with this, with the structure of reality, actually understand that and enact that in your life and you manifest truthful perception and consciousness within your experience of reality, then that then the, cl the, cl the cloud, the reality self-simulation, the conspansive manifold, God, dare I say, will, will, up, will, car will carry you just to have you around because you enforce its structure. You are teleological. You have a purpose and you will be carried by, and you will be carried by God. And that's, um, you know, I think something which will always escape Sam Harris's analysis, but nevertheless, so since consciousness is our most fundamental experience, um, then it makes sense to think not that matter gives rise to consciousness, that there, that, you know, we have this fully materialist or that we will ever have this materialist explanation of consciousness, but I think we actually get closer to, um, to a sort of idealism or dual aspect monism, which is inherent in the CTMU and transcendental philosophy going back to the, uh, to the Enlightenment era, is that, co is that consciousness gives rise to matter, that the, the consciousness, so God, God's essence subsisting in his creation through his telesis, through his energy, through this telic recursion, which generates that consciousness, but also gives lattice to the linguistic identity of reality, which then structures it and, you know, generates the physical universe. What we're saying then is that the consciousness is more fundamental than matter, is more fundamental than space and time. And when we ask whose consciousness, whose, whose mind, God. So, and he even get, and I think Sam Harris understands a lot of the problems. He says, you know, Everyone that we care that we care about and can care about is the entire reality is given its substance by the fact of consciousness. Um, John Wheeler, uh, this wasn't in the video, but it's it's a prescient quote. He says the universe gives rise to consciousness, and consciousness gives meaning to the universe. And if you 
don't think that consciousness and meaning are somehow fundamental to the universe's structures and laws, then I don't think you're considering your own experience thoroughly enough that we, we want to think of the universe as something out there, but what if it, and yes, in some ways it is, but it's also in here that we're, our experience of reality is reality itself for us and reality and the universe doesn't exist by itself, but in relationship to God. And we, uh, we have no right to assume that meaning and consciousness and God are not more fundamental than the physical universe, which is really just a construct of these things. And Harris actually kind of agrees with me with what I'm saying, obviously not the God stuff, because he is an evangelical atheist, uh, I like to say, but the militant atheist. But, the, but he kind of agrees. He says, you know, consciousness is the most important thing in the universe. In fact, it is the only important thing in the universe because importance can only be measured in relationship to consciousness. And the fact of the matter is that we are subsisting in a conscious entity, Matt, through a restriction of his energy called, called um, it's Matt through a restriction of his essence called telesis, called energy, which is a, which is, in telesis, if you actually look at, you know, what that is, it's not, it's not mind, it's not matter, but it's a combination of the two. And that's the ontic ground state from which everything else arises, from which consciousness, from which life, from which matter, from which space, from which, from which time. It gives lattice to all of that. So, and it clo the video closes, actually, the video wasn't made by Sam Harris. Well, it's his, it's his audio, but it it's a animation of it. And... He's, and it says, as far as we, and it's a quote from Carl Jung, who's a very, 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 very smart man. And he says, as far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light of meaning in the darkness of mere being. And I think I could chew on that for 10 years and not get to the bottom of that. So let that light, let the light of meaning shine forth in the darkness of mere being. May the peace of our Father in heaven be upon us, be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.